Now you should be comfortable with the concept of integration. We've looked at indefinite integrals and you'll see the difference when we start talking about definite integrals. Now the definition of a definite integral is very technical. There's a lot going on here, but I'm going to go just to an intuitive understanding and then I'll come back to this definition. So if we want to find the area under a curve, let's start with that concept. If we want to find the area under a curve, an effective way to do it, if I want the area here from A to B, is to divide that section up into rectangles and calculate the area of the rectangles and add them together. That will give us a nice approximation for that area under the curve, adding the areas of the rectangles, where the, this distance is however I'm calling a delta x, the change in x, and the height at any point is the y value. So I can just choose a number, one number inside that interval, and calculate the y value, and that will give me the height of that rectangle. So the f of some point x, i in that interval, is the y value, that's the length, and the width is delta x. So that's think saying we're dividing it into the same width rectangles. So then we've got to say, all right, we see that this is not a perfect area because some are over estimation, some are under. So how do I get a better estimate? Well, we cut our area up, and those are straight lines, into more rectangles. The more rectangles I've got, the greater accuracy I've got. So if this width, delta x, is really, really, really small, the width of my rectangles, then I get a very accurate approximation. So I just have to add them all up. So that's when we say, and I'll talk about the first part shortly, but if I go to the sum, where n is the number of rectangles I've got, the number of partitions in that distance, f of xi is the y value, that's the width xi. So, or delta x. So, let f be a function that's continuous over an interval. The interval is divided up into n sub-intervals, and that's the width. We are start at a and I end at b, and I cut them up into b minus a over n. And I pick one point in every interval to be a sample point. Then that definite integral of f over that interval, we denote it like this. So, where we've had an indefinite integral, we now have a definite integral. It's got limits of integration, a and b. I start at a and I end at b, and it's defined as follows. It's the limit as n tends to infinity, so now I'm saying I've got an infinite number of them, and that should just be delta x. The limit as n tends to infinity of the sum of all those areas of the rectangles. So that's the definition of the definite integral. So let's take a look. Practically, it's going to be nice to do a definite integral. You can already do indefinite integrals, and they're very closely linked. But that brings us to the fundamental theorem of calculus. And if something's called a fundamental theorem, you should know it's very important. So this is the building block of calculus, the fundamental theorem. We're saying the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is g. Now, what is g? g is any antiderivative of f. g of b minus g of a. So g in the point b minus g in the point a. And then we just have different notations for that. So what does that mean? If I looked at the indefinite integral of f of x dx, I would get some function g of x, some antiderivative. And they're all linked with a constant. We'll look at that constant concept shortly. So I've got an antiderivative d, g of x. So now I'm saying if I want the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, it's g of the point b, so substitute the point b into my function, minus what I get if I substitute the point a in. And g can be any antiderivative, and I'll show you with an example why we can say that. All right, so let's look at the first very simple one, the integral from 0 to 4 of x squared. So we know the antiderivative of x squared is a third x cubed plus c. Now, we're going to talk about the plus c shortly. So we're going to say, I'm going to do this on the side because you're going to see we can simplify this. If I look at a third, 
x cubed plus c between 4 and 0. This is our notation for substituting it in. That means it's a third, the x is 4, 4 to the power 3 plus c minus the third 0 to the power 3 plus c. So what I've got is 64 over 3 plus c minus 0 minus c. These c's cancel each other out every time. So that is why we can use any antiderivative. So whatever constant you put there, they're going to cancel each other out when I do the subtraction. So what we do is we don't even take the con constant into consideration when we do our calculations. We just say it's that between 4 and 0. So that's a third times 4 to the power 3 minus a third times 0 to the power 3, which is 64 over 3. So this is just showing you why the C is not ignored, but practically it's ignored. All right. Now, when we look at areas, and the definite integral isn't always directly linked to areas, and I'll show you that shortly, but if I've got a positive function, it is. This x squared looks like, looks like this. So if I look at x squared between 0 and 4, what we're saying is this area is exactly 64 over 3. So let's look at the next one, the integral from 1 to 10 of 5. Now that's quite a simple one to draw, it's just the constant function 5. I want the integral from 1 to 10. If we look at it in terms of area, if I had to find the area of this shape, this is just a rectangle. That width is 9, the height is 5, so the area should be 45. Well, let's see if it works with using the fundamental theorem of calculus. The antiderivative of 5 is 5x. So I've got 5x between 10 and 1. So that's 5 times 10 minus 5 times 1 is 50 minus 5, and that's 45. Now you'll notice I do not write units when I calculate the definite integral. When we calculate areas, we should have units when we know what the unit is. This could be looked at as units squared but whatever your unit is. For my purpose, I'm more interested in the calculations, but just take note, when you're calculating an area, the unit is important. But here, we're not asked to calculate areas, we're just asked to calculate a definite integral. So the definite integral is a number. We get a number out. Now, when we talk about areas, it is an area, so we, it needs to have a unit, but we'll talk about that more specifically later. All right, now some properties of definite integrals. Some of them you can deduce. The integral from a to a, if we had a positive function, I can imagine the area from a to a, I'm not moving, so that area is zero. The area from a to b, or the integral from a to b of constant times a function, is just the same as the constant times the function. It's integral from a to b. And as we can imagine, from a to b, the sum or difference between two functions is just the sum or difference between the integrals. Very similar properties as the indefinite integrals that we saw earlier. Now, just to look at notation, these two integrals are the same. My variable is x here, but my function is still f. Same function, my variable is just t. These two things mean the same. They both give me a number out, so they are identical. All right. Now, the integral from a to c of f of x dx, I've got that there. If you think of it in terms of area, and yet again, definite integrals don't all show area, and I'll show you that shortly. But if I look at, in terms of area, if I go from a to c, and I've got a number b in the middle, then it would make sense to say that the area from a to c under the curve is the same as the area from a to b under the curve, plus the area from b to C under the curve. So that makes sense. We just add those together. Now this even works if B is past C, and I'll show you where, why shortly. If I look at the integral from A to B of f of x dx, that's negative the integral from B to A of f of x dx. So if we think in terms of area, if I'm measuring the area backwards, I get a negative number. So if I want the area from A to C, it's the same. If I look, go back to this property here, it's the same as the area from A to B minus the area from C to B. So that's plus the area from B to C. So it works out. 
All right, so let's just look at these two. From 0 to pi of cos x, and this is why I'm saying a definite integral does not always show area. If we just, we'll look at the sketch shortly, if we just calculate it with antiderivatives, the antiderivative of cos of x is sine of x, so this is sine of x between pi and 0. Now, if we look at sine, we know sine of pi is equal to naught, sine of naught is equal to naught. You can do it with your calculators as well, that's sine of pi minus sine of naught. Just take note, when we are doing any calculus, our trigonometric functions are always in radians. Sine of pi minus sine of naught is naught, because it's naught minus naught. Now, if we look at the sketch of cos, why did we get a zero there? This is what the sketch of cos looks like. This is pi, this is pi over 2. This is 0 and 1. Now, this is why I say the definite integral does not necessarily just show area. Because here, if we see, we've got the same area above the line as we have below the line. So what this definite integral actually measured is the net area, where with the area below the line we see is negative, the area above the line is positive. So I get the net area. So this doesn't mean that there's no area under that curve or between that curve and the x-axis. It just means the net area is zero. So just be aware of the area concept linked to the definite integral. And the last one we're going to look at here, a parabola, the Antiderivative of x squared is the third x cubed plus x squared minus 3x. The whole thing between 1 and 0, so we put it in brackets. So that gives me a third times 1 plus 1 minus 3 minus 0, 0, 0. So there we go. So that gives us a third minus 2. So that's minus 5 over 3. So yet again, Definite integral doesn't give me necessarily area because here I get a negative number and area is not negative. In the next video, I'm going to look at more definite integrals, but for that you will need to be able to do substitution in integration.